Welcome to Todd's Lantern, where we discover the history, talent, and charm of St. John, New Brunswick. That was Wally's short story. The other story I wanted to share here, we're as close as we're going to get. And this is a story, I, I don't remember who told me this story, but it's been a story for a long time. We have some streets in St. John that are very difficult to say for the tourists and to spell. And one of them is Mecklenburg Street. We're as near to Mecklenburg Street as we're going to get at this point here. Mecklenburg Street and Manawagish Road are two local streets that St. Johners have trouble spelling. And this as story goes, a policeman was directed, was came upon a dead horse on the corner of Mecklenburg and Wentworth Street. He walked several blocks to King Street East, going to come to the old police station in a minute, and reported his findings to the captain. The captain asked him to file a report. When the report came in, in writing, it was noted that a horse not to found on Mecklenburg and Wentworth Street, but on the corner of Duke and Wentworth Street. So the sergeant immediately said to the constable, I thought you reported that the dead horse was on Mecklenburg Street. And the constable replied, I couldn't spell Mecklenburg Street, so I dragged it up <laughs> to Duke Street. <laughs> now my friend Bill Gardner, is here and he can bug for the story. And look at this rock over here. In the middle of winter, I dragged Bill up here one day and I said, Bill, I don't think this is really a rock. No, I said, Bill, I don't think it's really a chunk of metal. That's what I've been told. And Bill looked it over and he said, no, it's definitely a rock. The story as I was told is that I was on a wagon and we were doing a tour and uh, a horse-drawn wagon, and I was on it as an observer because they thought I might do some tours for them. So when we came to this point, a lady told, the lady guy told the story of this rock. And she said, this rock is the remnants of a hardware store. The owner of the wagon, or the owner of the store, put all his goods in a wagon down at the foot of King Street and started to escape the city during the Great Fire of 1877. And that's as far as it got. The wagon caught on fire, and that's what remains of that hardware store right there. Well, when the walk, when the tour was finished, I went to the lady and said, I didn't like to say anything while you were doing the tour, but I'm wondering about that rock and King Square story. Because I said, when I was a kid, that rock wasn't there. It was down by the bus shelter here, next to the next to the uh, Golden Ball Garage. Well, she said, that's the story I've been told. So I said, well, I, I don't believe it. It's marked by the New Brunswick Historical Society as a genuine souvenir from the Great Fire of 1877. <laughs> but I didn't believe that story. I don't believe the story of the wagon going through. I didn't believe that until Bill brought me up there and said, Dave, that is definitely not a rock. So there may be something to that story, but it definitely wasn't here when I was a young boy. Well, it's it definitely it been melted before, so it has been through a fire. Yeah, it's been through a fire. Yeah. Now, Billy Thompson was a fellow researcher in, 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 in the city library. <coughs> Billy is a, a meticulous researcher, and Billy discovered that there had been a blacksmith shop right down here where the rock was originally. So it may have been remains of slag heap from the back of the shop. I don't know. But it's a good story. <laughs> <laughs> so our next stop is where the old police station was on King Street East. I had a call from my mother one day and she told me her son had a psychic ability. 
I did. She could she could take him to any place in St. John, and he could tell what had happened in those places. And would she mind? Would she? Uh, would I mind if she would come along with the boy and take him on a walk and see whether or not he could identify some of the things that I knew about that he didn't know about. So I did that, and it, it just blew me away. The young boy was maybe 20, and uh, <clears throat> at Chubb's Corner, for instance, he told me there's been a lot of tragedy in this corner. Well, of course, people lost their properties in tax sales in Chubb's Corner. And uh, every place I took him, including the courthouse over here, he felt, he told me things that could have happened, and he had no idea what these were. But the most astounding thing that happened was right here on this rock. When we came to this rock, I told him nothing. He could not go near the rock. He got physically sick. This is where all the criminals in St. John were hung, right on the top of this rock. And he absolutely, absolutely could not go near the rock. So it was an incredible uh, lesson for me. I, I mean, I think we all have some ability we sense sometimes something is going to happen, and we should pay attention to that, but we don't. I had an instance this spring where I was riding my bicycle, Chris Pam Sis, and I felt strongly that I shouldn't take a certain trail, but I didn't listen to myself. I took the trail and fell off the bike and spent <laughs> six weeks recovering. So listen to those in a little inner voice when they, when they speak. Um, at this point, and no particular reason, except that we're as close to Marsh Creek as we will ever be at this particular point. And I want to tell you about a story Art Paul shared with me called the Marsh Creek Stroke. And Art was grew up on Thorn Avenue, and when he was a young boy, he told me they actually went swimming in the Marsh Creek. Now we can't imagine that today. But Art said they had a special stroke when they went in the Marsh Creek. And it's not the usual, you know, when they're crawling through the water. It was... <laughs> well, that was Art's story. He isn't around to say it isn't true, but it certainly, he told me it was true. One more little stop right here. These stairs would be about where the stairs of the original police headquarters located. Um, the jail itself, that's pretty well the imprint of what the jail was like. And the police, police building was here. And then the little postage stamp drink was on the corner. And my friend George Steers worked here. <clears throat> and I also worked in the police department for one year uh, as a clerk. But I didn't have the experience that George had. And George never told me the story, his wife did. And she swore, she told me, you'd have never put this in print, David, <laughs> while I'm alive. Maybe Dorothy, yeah. But I asked her son, Roddy, if it was all right to share the story, and Roddy said it was. So when George was working for the police department, he was the administrative assistant to the chief. So he wasn't actually a policeman, he was a civilian employee. And Dorothy and George had a big house in King Street, West St. John, and they rented out some of the house for people that needed an apartment or a, a room. And one of the per persons uh, they'd rented to was a lady, and uh, this lady was uh, in the habit of not wearing too many clothes around the house. And uh, <coughs> Dorothy would get after her, and. She would get drinking, and she would lapse into the nudity. Anyway, one day she lapsed into nudity and went for a walk. And she was picked up by the police and brought to the police station here on King Street East, where George was working on the front office. And when she came in, the two officers, she immediately recognized George and rushed straight off. 
<laughs> to give him a big hug. George, of course, was mortified that he would know a lady who was strolling around the streets nude. And he pretended he didn't know her, which made her all the more affectionate. And Dorothy said, George would not appreciate you telling this story. So don't tell it while I'm alive. <laughs> but she's gone now. And Roddy, her son, said, David, you're free to tell the story. <laughs>